week I told you guys we will be discussing the House of Nine series first. Now this book came out first long before this one, but apparently you're supposed to read this before you read this. But first a quick hashtag on the Fledgling Handbook. Basically it's it literally it's a handbook. Obviously a lot of it's made up. But you get some really interesting stories. They explain the symbols, a lot of the mythology, the pentagram. Everything is explained in the Fletching Handbook. Along with a lot of the changes that the vampires go through. Which I really appreciate because not a lot of books do that. They don't explain the metaphysical changes that the characters have to go through. In this book's case, in order to survive. I mean, if you listen to this, only 5% of the marked vampires in the House of Night series will actually become full vampires, make the transition from fledgling into vampire. So, in March, we meet our main characters. We have Zoe Redbird, which, thanks to her, we meet Grandma Sylvia Redbird, which is awesome. Love her. Then Zoe has this little freak out session when she goes to see her grand because her step loser, love that name, and mom totally freaked the hell out when she was marked. They're very religious and not the good type, like they're called the people of faith in this book and apparently you're going to help if you're a vampire in this series, like, okay, but before I get into that, they do worship a goddess, they don't worship God, they worship a goddess, her name is Nyx. And she's obviously the goddess of night. Another thing to remember is these vampires, they don't burn in the daylight and they also don't sparkle. Nothing against Twilight, I'm a huge fan. But I like what they did in this series. Instead of burning or sparkling, they did, they turned it around. So if you go out during the daylight, your eyes just like really hurt, you get this horrible headache. Zoe explains it as she's <laughs> running away from home to go to her grand because her grand's the only one that really understands her. So after she freaks out, she falls down, she hits her head and she actually meets the goddess Nyx. And when you get marked in this book, you get the crescent moon on your forehead, an outline. Now if you complete the transition from fledgling into vampire, your tattoo gets colored in and you get additional tattooing over here, like that. Like you saw the picture of me in my intro video. Yeah. By the way, you can do that on PC and Kristen Cass's website for the House of Night book. It's really cool. So, after that, Nyx gives her a kiss on her forehead which fills in her mark. I know, right? Still fledgling, but she has a colored in tattoo. So, she wakes up after she falls out because, I mean, dude, she lost a lot of blood. And she's in the infirmary in the House of Night in Tulsa. And who's there? Grandma Redbird. And then we meet Nefret. I'm not going to give spoilers, but just don't like her too much. I made that mistake. Huge disappointment. So on her way to show Zoe to her new room, let her meet her new roommate. Let's just say Zoe walks in on something very interesting, which is the first time we meet Eric Knight. To die for and Aphrodite the font. Yeah, bitch the law basically covers that. <laughs> when she finally gets to her new dorm, she meets who will soon be her new best friend, Stevie Ray Johnson. Now she's one of those y'all types of people, oaky as hell. And by oaky, you know, O K I E. She's countrified. She wears cowboy boots and bell bottom pants. Her lamp is a cowboy boot. Zoe will go on saying how weird this is but how much she absolutely loves that Stevie Ray is the only fledgling at the House of Night that has her hair short. Your hair and nails, nails as well, grow longer when you get marked. Interesting, isn't it? On her way to the dining hall, not cafeteria, dining hall, remember it's vampires, they're fancy. She gets to meet Damien Maslin, the group Brainiac and resident gay dude, but he's amazing. He is so sweet. He's one of the funniest characters in the series. And then we get the twins, which 
they're not really twins, seeing as Shawnee's a very dark complexion black girl with uh, Jamaican descent, if I'm not mistaken. And Erin Bates is, well, she's as white as I am. But they are eerily similar. They were even born on the same day. They wear the same shoe size, everything. So during this, she discovers, okay, I can do this. I can be a fledgling. I can make friends, make a home. Because <coughs> she has a sister, she has a brother. But they've been so brainwashed by her step loser into believing certain things. But even her mother is just like, nah, you know, like totally, it's messed up, it's really messed up. So she hasn't felt at home in like years, only when she went to visit Grandma Redbird on her lavender farm. Another thing, Grandma Redbird is Cherokee, so Zoe has a darker complexion than a lot of the other kids at House of Night because she does have Cherokee blood running through her veins. And it's through that that we discover she has an ability, an affinity for all five of the elements. Now usually how it works is if you are in training to become a high priestess of the House of Night, you're gifted with, let's say, Nefert can kind of speak to cats. Cats are very big in this series, just so that you know, they're the vampire familiars, kind of like, if you watch Sabrina, Salem, it's like that. So, <coughs> Zoe discovered she has the affinity for air, fire, water, earth, and spirit. So she can summon up all five of the elements, which makes her like a huge deal, because no one in vampire or human history has ever been able to do that. Big deal, isn't it? Remember the bitch Zilla I mentioned? Yeah, she causes kind of a problem with Zoe's ex, kind of ex, almost ex-boyfriend, Heath Luck. Now, Heath is a human and he was fooling around with Zoe. He called her Zoe. Eric called her Z. So, a lot of nicknames, but you'll get used to that. And there is a Sam Hain ritual. For those of you who don't know what Sam Hain is, it's basically Halloween, but more to its roots, the true story of how Halloween came to be. And we all know the story that on Halloween, the veil between the living and the dead is at its thinnest. So, Aphrodite is a le the leader of this group called the Dark Daughters. Now, while she was running it, it was a bunch of spoiled, snotty, rich freaking kids. You know, they were super mean. They actually took some of the teenagers that weren't that popular and used them as a refrigerator or a snack bar. Meaning they would drain their blood during the rituals mixed with red wine. Apparently, it's very tasty. But so, <laughs> the ritual happens, Aphrodite decides to be a major bitch, and she gets Heath involved. You don't mess with those friends, even if they were douchewads. Long story short, because I don't want to give too much spoilers, if you decide to read the book yourself, Zoe ends up having to save the day, getting Aphrodite demoted, and ending the book with Zoe's tattoo, spreading some more, and her becoming the new leader of the Dark Daughters. Now, guys, stick around for Betrayed next week, and maybe some just chat somewhere this week. I'm still trying to work out a schedule for this entire YouTube thing, kind of new to it. But thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Remember to stake that like button, leave a comment down below, and see you all next week.